Sunday July the 16th 2017 and I'm back in Hertfordshire today another local walk Watnut Stone Circular around about 13 and a half 14 miles uh, I believe some confusion over how long it actually is but uh, let's see it's a bit of a muggy grey day today and uh, annoyingly there's lots of those tiny little black storm flies around uh, which makes being out here uncomfortable, I must admit. All over my face at the minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, as I say, this walk has been on my radar for a long time, pretty much since I started walking. But because I'm very familiar with the terrain, um, I've always avoided it. It also is the case that this railway line is going to close very shortly. The line between Stevenage and Hartford North, of which this is uh, in the middle, uh, is closing for upgrade, uh, I think it's January 2018, uh, for about 18 months. So it's going to be nigh on impossible to do this walk in the future because the replacement bus service will be an absolute joke. Um, take about 40 minutes. So bear that in mind if you wish to do this walk. Coming out of the station. There's a sign there for the village centre, follow that. Interesting memorial here to um, Lieutenant General Philip Smith, Grenadier Guards. Died in 1894 apparently. Walking down Mill Lane, crossing what I presume is the uh, Bean. Pretty nondescript place, Wharton. Will be even more so when it loses its railway connection for those uh, months. Example of why it's nondescript. Now walking across something called the Lammas. Festival of the uh, First Harvest, Feast of the Fruits. Kingfish is apparently evident around this area. Yeah. Red Lammas. As you can see, it's very grey, but uh, no rain forecast till about seven. Touch wood, I'll be done by then. 270 metres, take these steps up the bank into a wood, or into some woodland. Merge out into the Jubilee Wood Project. Obviously, uh, these trees were very young when the uh, walk was written, because it is quite an old walk, this one. Ragwort, great variety of um, wild flowers in these woodlands. Lovely to see. In the background there, I think I can hear the A602 humming behind those trees. And of course the other issue we have here is that uh, Stevenage, which is about five mile away, uh, is right in the flight path of Luton Airport. Something that they're uh, contesting at the moment. Don't see any uh, right away posts, but uh, I'm assuming it's straight ahead there. There we go. Our first uh, encounter with the uh, A602, I believe. So it is indeed a busy road. Sunday probably the worst day of the week as well. Today being a Sunday, I don't normally walk on Sundays. But, uh, you know, get all the day trippers out today and the roads are busy. Not confident this walk's going to get completed without rain, you know. Let's see. Waiting to be cut on my left. And it looks like there's the machinery. No, perhaps not. Look, that, look, that looks like that more the machinery to be doing these uh, field beans on the right. Which have done their job for this year. Not sure what that crock is. Looks like a cross between a pea and a field of oats. Yellow hammer singing in the distance.
thankfully um, it's looking like this might be predominantly arable so uh, encounters with cows may be limited thankfully anyway fingers crossed going through this clearly marked path through the field of barley quite sting he seems to pop up in a lot of my walks for one reason or another hmm look at these clouds man ominous and the bird song's quiet as well it is at this time of year anyway but uh, it's always a an indicator that rain's coming yeah good the skylarks decided to uh, get into the sky and sing so no rain for a little while and there's a, another old biplane up there don't know if that's um, in focus nah anyway you can hear it there might have been some slight reconfiguration of the footpath here since the text was written because uh, there's no hundred meters of road walking now we come straight out to these uh, double metal gates from where we were in the field and there you can see the new fencing gives it away a little bit anyway it's even better back it's only a quiet little lane anyway it's not uh, indicated by any um, apparent symbol at the moment um, footpath markings around here are so so I notice East Hearts are not as good as North Hearts at uh, keeping things up to date it would appear um, but anyway we're on a chain walk it's called the chain walk if you google that the Hertfordshire chain walk pleasant it is thus far as well not quite as um, strenuous on the old hip joint as uh, what I was doing last weekend which did have a bit of a, an impact 15 miler possibly the top end of what I'm capable of at the moment but uh, we're getting there let's see what happens after today because today's won't be much shorter but the terrain is easier this leaf miner disease is really decimating the chestnuts this year terrible look at those leaves so how are they meant to produce fruit in the uh, autumn conkers real serious problem now it's no coincidence that all these illnesses are afflicting trees recently just like the uh, ash dieback and our kids are picking up uh, stuff that you know just wasn't around back in my day there's got to be something going on with the atmosphere. Global warming not happening? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. With its uh, flint and shingle surface, this is a real old greenway, this. Yeah, the old jay squabbling. Yeah, magpie as well. That'll be who they're having a fight with. Passing the Lordship Arms at Burns Green. It's in where books get to. A couple of weeks ago it was a phone box. Now it's a bus shelter. Past the time where we're waiting for the infrequent buses in Hertfordshire. It's in a dirty looking pond on the right after 350 metres. Which appropriately enough in the grounds of Pong Cottage. Turn right here on Broad Away 25. So we've reached the uh, junction where we take a left here as opposed to the field margin straight ahead. There's an example of the poor maintenance by East Hearts at the moment. Hidden in there somewhere is the finger post. Fairly decent vista for us here. As I say, it's um, interesting. This wheat looks like it's ready, but it obviously isn't quite. 
potentially the last Grand Prix at Silverstone today, I've just recalled. Good to know. Couple of deer in the very distance there. They'll get wind of me shortly. But they are a good kilometre or so away. And there was me saying it's not too hilly here. And I'm descending quite a steep one. There you go. My second uh, combine in a week. And this one is cutting wheat. In fact there's, a, um, there's another one up on the top field as well. There's a possibility that I might be getting in a combine cab in a few weeks or over the next few weeks. Let's see. So at this point we don't go straight ahead across the footbridge but take a right through this gate instead. Now that's interesting. Having uh, done the edge of the wheat field, this combine's gone straight in to do the rape, which is turning uh, very dark, it must be admitted. So it must be um, very mature. Thankfully it's sheep and not cattle. Thank God they're uh, sheep and not cattle. It's just starting to spit, which is annoying. Which is probably why those uh, newly shorn sheep are over there in their hedgerow. Flies everywhere at the minute, but thankfully not those irritating little storm ones. Just crossing over the concrete um, footbridge mentioned in the text. Look how dry this riverbed is. I know it's middle of July, but we have had some uh, pretty decent showers recently. Not a stitch in this river. Anything that's not a main river at the minute is absolutely bone dry. Terrible problem in this county. All the tributaries all dried up, all the ponds pretty much dried up. It's a right problem following another very pleasant greenway up into woodland. Pleasant enough vista. <laughs> Looking back to, uh, from whence we come. Take a left here on the bridle way with the earth track. Okay, uh, having reached the triangular piece of land and the minor road, I'm continuing with the standard route. So turning right down the lane. I'm in off the road to take footpath five, which can be overgrown apparently. Forgot me secateurs again today. Headed towards Dane End, which is where I should take my belated lunch. It was indeed passable, just, but uh, brings you out to yet another pleasant vista. Lovely. Considering we're what, 20 miles from London? And the corner and another pleasant vista. Now at this juncture you can either turn left and go up to All Saints Church or cut across that field there and go down into Dane End Village for the recommended lunchtime pub stop. And as I tend to do churches and not the pubs I think I'll be going left. It's looking ominously dark. Fingers crossed, because I'm only uh, less than halfway at the moment, about a third of the way round. So you need the first thing you see as you turn left is the spire of said church. Also there. Big buzzard. Where is he? 
Nope, can't capture him. But um, you're getting buzzards and kites over the same fields here. But they do have different menus, so it is feasible. Well, just as the heavens open, let's go through these brand new replacement gates. Thanks, Barney. God rest your soul. You didn't last long, did you? Oh man, it's a storm porch open, I hope so, because I say, it's just starting to rain. There we are. St Andrews at uh, Dane End. Sorry, it's All, Sa All Saints, not St Andrews. Not sure where I got that from. Very pleasant little place this. Church is open. So we're going to have a gander. Thankfully the rain's just stopped as well, so I might be able to uh, snack outside. This is the south entrance apparently. Look at these uh, headstones. They're ancient. So battered you can't read them. It's actually uh, All Saints of Little Munden. This being part of the Mundens, not a uh, Dane End. Interesting. Simple enough little place. So there you go, they tell you who it is. Sir John Thornbury, 1344-1396. And presumably his wife there, Nanarina. Amazing. I think this place has been here all that time. Some information here about them as well, the family. Clearly a uh, big family here. There's probably his son, Sir Philip and Margaret Thornbury. Look almost mummified. And then looking to the rear. Excellent, they've got a churchyard plan there. Very good for tracing your ancestors. Oh, there you go, wonderful little church. I think the clock's right as well, quarter past three. So let's tuck in. Nice new seat here in memory of the Smiths of Lordship Farm. What a wonderful place for lunch, eh? And there's the Vista. At a road junction, but clearly nice and quiet out here. Beautiful. 
Well, incredibly, and probably for the first time in my life on these walks, I've left my lunch at home. Absolutely amazing. How could I do that? Most important part of the trip. Apart from this camera, obviously. Anyway, it's been done, so uh, I'm going to have to survive on water, perhaps, until the end of the trip. I pass three, let's press on. Passing by a little Munden C of E school. There's the original section of it. And behind you clearly you've got uh, an extension. Interesting, this bramble is full of these butterflies, which uh, I can't get to open its wings at the minute, so we can't get a good picture of it. But um, it's unusual. See if I can. Nah, not opening its wings. Looking back at Little Munden, stroke Dane End, and uh, All Saints. What a painful way to go. Poor little worm is being devoured by red ants. View down the valley. The farm buildings on my left mentioned in the text could well be homes by the time the next club walk happens up this way. Turn right into Whitehill Golf. 18 hole par 72 apparently. Floodlit driving range, so forth. Craig Scudder, PGA professional. Looking back down the valley again. A collection of green carpets. As we walk past the uh, golf club. It's been a while since I've walked through a golf course actually with the exception of Chroma. So what's happened here is um, I've gone wrong. I followed that arrow taking you up by the side of the wood when in fact you look at, if you look at the back of the um, finger post you'll see the direction that we're supposed to be taking which is to follow the concrete track round to the right towards the farm buildings in the distance. So be careful. Quite a tricky section this, getting through the farm. Anyway, through it I've got. Directions are not always 100% clear. Wood journeys ahead. Down the left hand side of this field. Pretty impressive views again. As we uh, leave the farm just behind us. Wind's picking up, rain's definitely on its way. See the pumping station down there. That'll be the uh, Bean Valley. It's the large oak referred to in the text as being on your left. The um, route has changed somewhat since the text was written clearly. Uh, it makes life a bit easier actually. In fact, that's a small sewage plant down there. The run of mini pylons referred to in the text are not on your right as per the text unless they've been moved but they're on your left and uh, here's our journey this lovely bit of wildflower meadow on my right beautiful that back I was one step ahead of the text because there's the pylons on my right or will be there's Sackham Church in the distance.
So here we are at Sackham Church. From another angle. Now I need to make a decision here whether to do the full walk, having had no lunch, or to shorten it a bit. And as you can see, it's half past four, I believe. That's correct. So here we are. Still undecided which way to go. Could save myself two miles by taking the shortcut now. Protect my hip a bit. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, what I need to do is be realistic today, I think. Save the leg for a future event and do the shortened version. I can always come back and do the long version another time. Not that, not that I like doing that, to be honest. And I know the terrain will be pretty similar to what we've already seen as well, albeit that uh, there's a river element, actually, isn't there? Yeah, so there we have it, uh, I've decided to take the shortened version simply because the hip flexor is niggling me a little bit and I don't want to overdo things, so um, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to film the whole walk today, shame that because um, I don't like setting out, out on a walk and then not completing it, but there is a shortened version here and uh, as I say it will give the walker uh, an idea of what's to be seen and then um, perhaps I'll come back and finish off the uh, complete walk at a different time of year when I'm 100% fit best to veer on the side of caution at the moment unfortunately especially as I'm hoping to do some uh, undulating walking next weekend in a different part of the country all to be revealed so I need to preserve this hip Okay, the text refers to a T-junction with a uh, road, which is probably most likely ahead there, and then walking to the A602, but it looks like there's a footpath here. T-junction here of footpaths. So I wonder if it means take the um, left here, which would be a lot safer than going on the road. There's another case in point. Bone dry. Okay, that 800 metres of road walking was pretty dicey, particularly on a Sunday afternoon, as I say, where most of the uh, heavy traffic would be out. Uh, be quieter on a weekday, I would have thought. Not so on a Saturday, though. So we've got two options here. Ours is over the wall, over this step style. Now we're off the uh, beaten, beaten road. Now walking through somewhere called Woodall Park on the map. There's another reason for uh, curtailing it a bit. That big black cloud, I've already had a little douse in today so uh, fingers crossed I can finish this before that pause. We're now on the Hertfordshire Way, clockwise direction. There's a wonderful silhouette just flew up from the little brook down on my left landed on that branch as easy as you like which surprises me actually amazingly nimble on that branch or is he? he's in two mines there Anyway, thankfully, once again, sheep. And the old heron's flown now, so I caught that just nice. Taking shelter, so uh, interesting. Rain must be coming. I 
there is Whitehall Park, whatever it is. I don't know, and I'm relatively local. Mind you, East Hearts is not North Hearts. A bit more upmarket down here, believe it or not. I mentioned such is the shortage of water that they've um, kind of boarded this side up. But it's not deep enough anyway. <laughs> There's not enough water to get over it. That uh, concrete protector, or whatever it is. This is a tributary to the Bean, apparently. So interestingly, there is an outlet here, if the river ever does get high enough. But as you can see, there hasn't been anything in it for years. Those silver willows. Wonderful colour tree, that is. There might have been a brick-sided bridge here, referred to in the text, but um, no more. Plenty of water here as we cross over the brick bridge, mentioned in point nine of the text. Interesting mini lock gate there. Well, here we are. Another field already cut and baled. Incredible. Woodall Park, this is called. Not White Hill Park, as I referred to it earlier. Not sure if the uh, school where the Beckham boy went is around here somewhere. I believe it is. There is said Woodall Park. I'm not sure if that's the school or not. Rain's coming down again, damn. And what's left of the straw, see how accurately it's been sewn in the first place. Incredible. And then you get a computer gener uh, computer run combine cutting it. Technology in agriculture these days is incredible. All operating off of a GPS in the sky. Amazing. Very different to just about, what, 20, 30 years ago referred to in the text as a corrugated barn as you can see is now a very plush residence as is happening a lot now out in the uh, uh, rural areas nicely planted with native species oak wildflower meadow fantastic job that's what I like to see when things are done properly but as I say, no corrugated barn now, as referred to in the text. So there you go. What was stables, apparently, now plush homes. Remnant of what it used to be. Bit of fencing done here. Oh, just arriving at our third church today, and we're on something called the Walnut Stone Millennium Walk. Quite an impressive building. I won't go in this one because I don't think it's open. Lots of flint again. Quarter six, about right. looking for the name, St Andrew and St Mary, Watnut Stone. Not very often you see a monkey puzzle tree in a cemetery. And there you go. The style referred to in the text is now one of these nice circular kissing gates. Passing by to the right of a Nice little allotment patch. So you come out opposite the bull. One uh, possible tea stroke refreshment point. Recommended stop, the Georgian Dragon. Quite clear to see why as well. 
Seems a class above. There's some idea of what's on offer. Okay, 11.8 miles later, so it's almost 12 miles, and five hours, five minutes later, I'm back at the station after what turned out to be a very pleasant walk. Just a shame I couldn't do the extra mileage to complete it, but it really would have been uh, a little bit hit and miss for my hip flexor. Not the hip as much, but the hip flex is giving me problems at the moment. So um, better safe than sorry. Besides which, weather was looking a little bit dubious. And more importantly, I didn't have any energy left as I missed me lunch. Unbelievable. However, as other people have indicated, that is a very good walk considering where it is. East Hertfordshire is probably one of the better parts of Hertfordshire apart from the uh, northeast pocket up by Hagston and Pegston where we were the other week so yeah a good walk uh, I might get back to do the um, remainder of it at some point in the future but it obviously won't be while this rail line's closed or if my hip deteriorates anyway free walk 94 uh, completed there were some errors in the text, uh, hasn't obviously been completely updated, but uh, minor, I got there, understood what was written, so fine. Till the next one.